Lisa, you are on. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Don. And welcome to everyone who is able to join us tonight. This is our second session in our series that we have named Keeping Rotarians Connected. So tonight we're actually going to focus on producing effective meetings. Our first sessions were focused on the nuts and bolts tech side. Tonight's going to be a little bit more about the design and flow of meetings to make them effective. For those who don't know me, I'm Lisa O'Halloran. I'm the district educator for 6270. And tonight presenting with me is our district membership chair, Kathy Christensen, and of course, technology chair, Don Griffin. So I think Don has muted us at this point, and it looks like everyone um, has named themselves. So we, kn we know who's on the call, which is absolutely fantastic. So thank you for that. So when COVID hit last spring, it really felt like the wheels fell off. Um, we felt like we were midair and we didn't know what we were going to be doing. And it was, didn't take long. And I think we felt like we landed in the Muppets. Anyone feel like this on Zoom meetings lately? Hmm. So we, we see a little bit of that happening. We landed. Since March, a number of clubs have moved forward in the hybrid model to meet the needs of our members where they are, where they're comfortable to create the best possible experience. So tonight we're moving forward to talk more about how to produce an effective meeting. But before we start, Don has a poll just to see what's going on amongst the clubs that are represented tonight. Okay, I'm going to start the poll. And um, the question is, how is your club meeting? And while I got this up, Lisa, do you wanna actually press the present button in Google Slides? Ah. I'm trying to do that and it's not working. There we go. You might have to reshare your screen now. Yeah. So, and okay. It does look like everybody has, has, or has voted. And um, these are actually very encouraging results. Um, we have, um, two thirds of us are actually meeting in, in a hybrid session. Um, two are meeting online and three are meeting in person. And the good news is nobody on this meeting is not meeting at all. So, you want me to try, you want me to try doing things from over here, Lisa? That would be great. Okay. I think it's my dual monitor that's messing things up. So, so Don's going to take it away. And tech glitches happen sometimes, right, guys? So here we go. And we could, we, we could try and say that we planned it that way, right? We could. <laughs> we absolutely could. <laughs> No, we're going to be a little more honest than that, right? <laughs> so as Don noted, we are, pre we are recording the presentation. Um, our agenda for the evening, we're going to start with a membership update from Kathy. And then we are going to spend the bulk of our time tonight on our panel. We have five clubs represented that have made the shift to hybrid. We'll find out what's working, what they're learning, and how they continue to adapt in the new normal. So that's the bulk of our program. We'll wrap up with some hybrid meeting tips. And then we're going to ask for your feedback on what is next for your club, um, a little bit about your pain points around membership as we continue to develop new training sessions looking ahead to our next one next month. So take it away, Kathy. Thanks so much. So if you will advance, John, um, I wanted to just take this moment, first of all, to because the numbers from July 1, you know, we're really just starting to get those real numbers. And so I wanted to share kind of where things stand uh, for Rotary globally and then specifically for our district um, with you. And um, because it's really important, right? I mean, our asset, our mate, our, our asset is our members. So we need to do what we can to allow us to continue to create lasting change in our communities. And uh, 
some of the information I'm going to give you, there was a, a number of surveys conducted and, and some of that information is coming from there. But you know, over the past five years, we've stayed right around 1.2 um, million members. Uh, uh, unfortunately, July 1, we um, decreased to just under 1.2 million. We're at 1,189,525. That's worldwide. Um, and we've seen some growth since July 1. So these numbers are as of August 31st, uh, grown uh, just under 15,000 members worldwide and actually uh, added 104 clubs since the 1st of July. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that is probably, uh, those growth numbers are more representative. The growth is happening not in the United States as much as it's happening in other places but at least Rotary uh, globally remains a force uh, for good in the world. Um, we want to, you know, just focus on membership because in order to keep being um, that force in the world, we need to stay relevant and uh, do what we can to be innovative and be diverse and adapt to, to change. Uh, diversity is, is one of Rotary International's core values. The RI Board of Directors actually passed a diversity statement to help us to become a more open and inclusive organization. And, um, you know, unfortunately worldwide, only 23% of Rotarians are women, but uh, we had kind of an epic, you know, a, a milestone um, in the last month or two, Jennifer Jones of, um, I kind of, I always want to call her our Jennifer Jones, uh, but she will be um, the RI president in the 22 to 23 Rotary year, and she will be the first female Rotary International president in the 115 year um, history of Rotary. So we're very excited about that change. Can you advance, John? Um, as you can see here, uh, you know, we grow by strengthening our membership and by delivering value. And um, unfortunately, uh, we don't have so much a problem with attracting members as we seem to have with keeping them. And uh, um, half of the people who left, 52%, have been members for la uh, less than um, uh, three years. So, you know, that is a significant problem and one we need to focus on. 90% uh, of prospective members have a positive impression of Rotary. They, you know, this was a survey that Rotary International did last year. And in that survey, 90% uh, of prospective members had a very positive impression of Rotary. However, after uh, they left, um, only about half of them still felt, uh, still would recommend Rotary to their family and friends. So what's happening or not happening between when they join and uh, when they leave is uh, a big issue and something that needs to be focused on. If you could move forward, Don. These are the numbers for our district as of um, uh, July 1. Uh, as you can see, we have 2,563 members in the district. We're down 208 members from 2017. And um, half of that loss of members actually happened in 2019. And you know, not surprisingly, some of that was driven by the pandemic. But as uh, I finished talking about this slide, but you'll see in the next slide that that trend is not a new trend. That trend is just accelerated because of what's happened with COVID. So we have 54 clubs. We haven't added any new clubs. We really haven't charted a new club in our district since 2015, March of 2015. Um, you can see the male-female split here. We're doing better than the world. We have 31% of the women 31% of our members are women in our district. So that is something to be proud of. Our new member retention and our existing member retention um, are also higher. Uh, 
members under age 50, this, uh, the statistic, I only had the statistic worldwide for under age 50, but on a district level, I can only get that data for under 40. So it's a mismatch, which is why those asterisks are there. Um, so you can see we have far fewer members under, uh, under 50, under 40, um, and uh, a lot of members over 50 plus. And so essentially our membership is aging, um, which is a problem in the sense of, you know, we need, we need to be getting younger, uh, getting newer, younger members. I mean, that just has to be a kind of an ongoing process. Uh, however, I will say we have 41% of our members who have not reported their age. So it's a little hard to know, um, you know, what, what the actual uh, statistic looks like, but that's, that's the information we have right now. So if you could pro progress the slide, Don. So this graph is the one that I did just wanna share uh, because it just does show so starkly the trend for our district. This is the membership trend for our district. You can see in you know, this last year what happened due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but you can see that the trend has not been good for you know, 10, almost 10 years. Um, and, I, and I would challenge you to think about uh, your own club and what factors um, might have an impact on that. Uh, as we talk more here this evening in our last session, this evening session, and in the next sessions, you know, we focused a little on the technical, de uh, technical aspects of how do you get a hybrid meeting set up, what equipment, what things do you do. This is such an opportunity. Um, you know, COVID-19 pandemic is a, is a terrible tragedy. There, there's no doubt about that. But if there's a silver lining, we have an opportunity uh, to uh, throw the rules out the window, rethink how we're doing things, and, and um, be creative in the way we conduct our clubs. Um, and some of that, the hope is some of that will begin to have a positive impact on these membership trends. So moving right along, Don, because I'm probably running out of time here. Um, uh, you know, the, one of the things they did is ask members why they leave. 30% was cost and or time. 23% was club environment unmet expectations. And I would challenge you again, given this hybrid environment, given the opportunity to do things in a very, very different flexible way, some of these um, key items, cost and or time club environment, it's possible for you to address those. And we will be focusing on that more and more as we move forward. And the last slide, if you would, um, and so the surveys that were done by Rotary International, um, the key three top things that Rotarians um, uh, valued most, community service, local community service, friendship and fellowship, professional development opportunities. I don't think that's a surprise to any of you Rotarians who've been Rotarians for a while. The only distinction uh, that was a little um, of interest is younger, newer potential members were more focused on change globally, where existing Rotarians were perhaps more um, focused on local uh, change and service. And, and it's, so it's just really important to be aware of those potential differences uh, as we move forward. And I think, I think that's it. So uh, was I going to introduce the panel, people? I've got it for you, Kathy. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Go uh, so, so with that in mind, we know what, what Rotarians want, and fellowship and friendship is a big piece of it. So let's move into our panel and introduce the, the five fantastic Rotarians we have with us tonight. First is Michelle, who is the Membership and Communications Coordinator for the Rotary Club of Milwaukee. Dennis, who is the president of the Rotary Club of Manitowoc Sunrise. Heidi, representing the Rotary Club of Elkhorn. Edwin, 
who is the immediate past president of the Rotary Club of Milwaukee Amigos After Hours, and Bob, who is the Rotary Club Milwaukee Amigos After Hours, oh, Rotary Fond du Lac, my goodness, there we go, Rotary Fond du Lac Morning Club. Um, so varying sizes um, and, and different experience levels with technology. So we're excited to have all five of you with us this evening. So let's start with Michelle, if we could, and maybe tell us a little bit about you. How long has your club been hybrid and what is your role in hybrid meetings? Sorry, I just have to unmute myself. Um, so I am the membership uh, coordinator for the Rotary Club of Milwaukee. I am unfortunately not a Rotarian. I just work in the office, uh, but we transitioned quite quickly to uh, kind of our virtual programming in March. We had our last uh, live kind of normal in-person meeting on March 10th. Uh, um, based on extenuating circumstances around uh, the meeting kind of policies in place by the city, uh, we were not able to transition to a March 17th meeting. We had to cancel. Uh, on March 24th, we had a program that was broadcast to YouTube from uh, Memorial Hall, which is where we meet uh, in downtown Milwaukee. And then after that program, we trans transferred to a fully virtual programming system uh, utilizing Zoom webinars. Uh, on September 1st, we went to the hybrid format uh, using YouTube, uh, not using Zoom anymore and streaming from Memorial Hall with an audience. Fantastic, thank you. You guys adapted quick, quickly. <laughs> so congratulations to you. Thank you. Um, Dennis, how about your club? How long have you been hybrid and, and what is your role? Okay, I unmuted myself. Uh, right uh, when the quarantine started in mid-March, uh, we no longer held meetings. We probably for a, a week or two, we floundered a little bit what uh, direction we were taking, but it wasn't any more than that. And maybe it was only a, a week before we started uh, uh, doing a Zoom meeting. We're a small club, but we've uh, pretty much had uh, about 60% of our membership and attendance, sometimes a little bit more than that. Uh, and after a bit, uh, some of the members were asking, isn't there not a way that we could go face to face? Well, our general meeting is held at a location here, Manitowoc, Felician Village, which is uh, a very high aged population and nursing home and uh, extended care type of facility. And most likely now is gonna be one of the last places opened up to allow us to go back to our normal meeting location. Uh, we're a breakfast club, we meet in the morning, and we found a restaurant here in town, a family restaurant that uh, at seven in the morning had not been very busy, had a back room that they said they would turn over to us. And I believe it was about mid, mid to late January that, or I'm sorry, late, I'm listening to my phone here, get my mind off, uh, late uh, uh, June, that we started doing a uh, hybrid meeting. And the, uh, I wish I could turn that off. I am sorry. Uh, no I'm not gonna be able to reach it. Uh, so the uh, uh, meetings uh, started with a hybrid. Uh, one of our members who I was hopeful was gonna be part of the panel, but he had a conflict. So I'm filling in as uh, pretty much the uneducated tech person, but trying to lead our club, but with some good support from uh, Paul Rackley, who set us up uh, with our hybrids at the restaurant. We get uh, still about 60% of our membership in attendance uh, and fewer in Zoom than we had because many of those are now coming face to face, but still occasionally in the Zoom. And what we did find is that we're using our laptop uh, each week, it's a bit of a challenge. We keep learning something a little bit new and new ideas. What we did find is that the location of where we're setting the laptop, uh, what would be most advantageous. And 
we have a place where we can put it elevated and then Paul would sit and shift the, uh, uh, the camera in the direction of who might be speaking somewhere in the room. Mm -hmm. And he actually found a, a, a advantage that helped him and it was finding a little uh, a carousel, a, a small thing about uh, maybe 15 inches in diameter that I suspect he knew he had it at home and had no idea what it was used for or why he had it. But it was probably something you set in the middle of your dining room table and put your uh, condiments on and rotated it around in, in a circle. And so this worked out very nice and still does for our uh, setting the laptop on and be able to rotate it. Sure. Uh, he was trying to work a mechanical thing, something they could do from a distance. And I suppose with some work, you could probably get to something together where you could do it remotely and, and steer it around. The one problem that we have had is the audio. And probably the biggest part of that problem is myself because we have a, a cord that uh, the microphone, it, I, I think it's about a maybe 10, maybe it's more than that, maybe 15 foot in length. But I'll be holding it and somebody across the room starts talking and I forget to even project it into that direction. But ideally, if I could reach it over to that person uh, and have them hold it, then the Zoom would be able to listen in and understand what was going on. Uh, sure. So that, that's been a, a challenge. And each week we try to find new things that are advantageous to us. Uh, mm -hmm. One reason I want to be part of this is to pick up new ideas, things that will help us. And maybe somebody has got some, something real creative for us. And we, we try to be creative. We keep reminding everybody to bring in new ideas. Uh, going back to the mic, one thing that uh, we did just recently find is, is helping and helping me. Uh, I, it may have come from the previous session that you had. One of our members had been to either that session or something else that suggested that you might want to attach your mic, uh, which is just a, a small microphone on the end of a cord, attach it to some sort of a pole or maybe even there they suggested baseball bat. But he said, you know, example, maybe a broomstick or a baseball bat. Well, I actually found a, a cut off baseball bat at home and it's about a, a foot, uh, maybe a little bit longer. And we just attach the cord and that to the end of the baseball bat. So then we just take the baseball bat and pass it around. And sure. that's a good reminder. And it's also it's easier to hold something up in front of you instead of the little mic. Absolutely. You're passing the baton, so to speak. That's what we're doing. Yes, we are. Yes. Yes. So your club, you said about 60% attend. So yeah. that means you have eight, well, 10 people in the room? No, no our, our, our membership is, is around 20. Maybe I don't know if we started the year off at 21. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very sadly, one of our members yesterday passed away. That's not the way we want to lose members. I'd rather they tell me they have to move away or, or something, but it was a, a sad meeting this morning when I had to uh, announce uh, passing of Kathy uh, Zuki. And she was uh, a very good person in our community and was uh, fairly new to Rotary. She spent maybe two or three years with us, but in those two or three years, you could tell she was getting both feet into uh, yeah. to Rotary and wanted to grow. So our hearts uh, go out and our prayers for yeah. her family now. Uh, it was not the virus that uh, uh, concerned her or that, that, uh, that took her. Uh, we're still trying to find out exactly what it was, but mm -hmm. it was up in the Green Bay at Bellin Hospital yesterday. Uh -huh. Well, we're sorry well, for your loss. Well, thank you. For uh, the, our membership, we generally, with some guests and, and Zoom, all in, we, we end up generally having uh, Anywhere from uh, 13 to, to 16, maybe it's been our largest uh, mm -hmm. showing of uh, people. Sure. Uh, today we had two guests and uh, uh, I think uh, 12, uh, maybe, maybe 12 uh, members in attendance. So it might have been 14 there. Sure. Well, I love your lazy Susan idea in the middle uh -oh. of the table for a small group <laughs> yeah. and being able to spin it. That's a great idea. And the, Thank you. The I'll help all of that. Yes, yes. Thank you for sharing. Um, let's move on to Heidi, if we could. Could you tell us a little bit about um, how long you've been hybrid and what is your role in hybrid meetings? 
Absolutely. So yeah, so in March, like um, many clubs, we stopped meeting for a few weeks. And then we did. Oh, excuse me one second. Okay, sorry. So um, it was about uh, mid April then that we started doing the hybrid meetings through zoom and attendance wasn't even 50%. So it was kind of disappointing. It would be like 12 to 14 people and we have 40 to 50 in the club. Um, so we were really anxious to get to the point for the hybrid meeting. And so when we did, which was about four weeks ago, we did see attendance rise. There's about a dozen people on the Zoom call still, and there's about a dozen people in the room. And it has worked out well. We are fortunate in that we meet at a public library. And so we're in the community room. And so they already have some of the tech stuff. We did have to buy um, a, a microphone that picks up sound from the whole room. And we did have to buy a mobile camera with a little, the world's littlest tripod. It's really cute. And then I bring my personal computer into the room for each of the meetings so that we can get it set up and not be worried about what are they doing at the library? Do they have their computers, et cetera? And so one of the things that we found that's very helpful is having the computer set up start about 10 minutes before the meeting actually does because that way people who really appreciate the community aspect of rotary are able to talk during the 10 minutes while we might we're walking around and you know doing stuff but there's interaction and there's interaction between all the people on zoom but also the people in on zoom with the people who are physically in the room and so that allows for um for a good environment and you know people can tease each other and joke and and the things that that are part of what rotary is the, the fun time rather than just saying okay we're going to have the business meeting and so um, i'm the president elect of the club and so i will take over next summer and so i've been uh, volunteered to be as the tech person to help get set things set up. Now, I'm not a techie, so they had to tell me what to do and what everything was, but I can set it up and get it going. And so far, it has uh, been working well. We meet at noon on Wednesdays. We have not yet started doing the luncheons again. We used to have a lunch every Wednesday, and it was that well, was a really good lunch and we all looked forward to it. But we're talking about starting that in October. And because of the COVID concerns, et cetera, we will either be doing a box lunch or will we be doing a very simple lunch where there are set rotary people who would do the serving part? So say you'd have three people serving because the, the problem with COVID and how we were doing it before, according to our uh, caterer, is that you don't want the serving utensils transferring between people. So if people have their masks on and they're just walking through the line and they're keeping their social distance, we could have three people serve their um, lunch to them. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, and so we, by buying the, the camera and the, the microphone that picks up everything and really long extension cord, we are able to be very fluid with where the setup is. So when we first started the first week that it was a hybrid meeting, it literally was just facing the screen. So we were basically showing everybody on Zoom, everybody on Zoom again. And so the next time we flipped it around so that they were seeing only the speaker. And then this last time we were looking at moving it around as needed so that we can show various aspects and people feel more part of the entire uh, meeting. So. so nice improvements. You've adjusted each week and really focused on that experience for everybody, whether they're in the room or they're on Zoom. So exactly. thank you all for doing that. I think Don probably, um, at this point, did you want to chime in and, and talk about the iPhone opportunity for passing around the room? Uh, well, I can't. Um, what the, um, and actually we did, we did this yesterday uh, where, with our club. We had uh, our first uh, meeting where we had the speaker in-house or in the room versus uh, online. And a member of the Oshkosh Southwest Club came in and provided the, the extra cameraman perspective. Uh, the other thing that using the mobile device, making sure that it's muted and its sound is off, 
well, but maybe is a way to it, rather than passing out the passing around the mic, you can walk up to the person and use the other side of the camera to let them interact with the speaker or those uh, online. So um, there, if you go back to our first session, I did talk, spend a lot more time on that and I don't want to take away too much time from here, so. Sure. Just knowing that that's an option because we've heard both from Dennis and from Heidi how they do that in the room, um, that, that could be helpful. So thank you for that, Heidi. Let's move on to Edwin, if we could. How long have you been hybrid and what is your role, Edwin? Hi guys, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, so um, like uh, Lisa said, I'm the past president for the Amigos Club. Um, I think COVID-19 affected everybody in a very adverse way and especially small clubs. Uh, we are a very small club of 17 people. Um, most of our people have day jobs, so we are an, an evening club. Um, and we were meeting over at the uh, Milwaukee Athletic Club uh, out on Water Street in downtown Milwaukee. Um, it was a room that was provided for us free of charge because one of our members was a patron there. And that's where we were meeting most of the time. Um, we had switched where we were meeting once a month, we would go to one of our members uh, restaurant out in West Dallas, and that's where we would meet. But with COVID happening, um, we, we had to change things because of the limitation of amount of people that could be in, in one location at one time. I think our first hybrid meeting was in uh, May. Um, April was kind of a weird month because I think everybody was trying to kind of figure out what to do and people were very, very scared about the virus and didn't know what to do. People didn't feel comfortable. So we had a hybrid meeting, um, basically invited another club from out east uh, that does presentations for clubs that were trying to adapt the hybrid meeting um, kind of format and uh, worked very well. It was a project in Guatemala and we really enjoyed that. Um, and I think we continue to have hybrid meetings um, pretty much every month. Um, I tried to have at least two or three engagements every week because before we were meeting uh, pretty much like every Tuesday and then we'd have one Tuesday in the month when we have an extra Tuesday for a social. So I kind of try to keep the hybrid meetings uh, going just so that I can keep people engaged. Um, it was difficult because uh, a lot of people, I think, were dealing with a lot of workload, me included being president. Um, so I really used my secretary. Um, and I think that's one thing I can give as, as a suggestion to the club. A lot of times if you're a president or you're a member chair and your work just doesn't allow you to be able to convene these meetings, you should not stop. The club should not just depend on one person. Uh, if there's somebody good with technology or something like that, they should really utilize that person, whoever is able to do that work. So um, I, I was very busy because I work for the Department of Public Health and uh, we were front and center with the COVID response. So uh, I, I had one of the ladies that was doing our newsletter um, actually set up the Zoom meetings for me and uh, I would come in and just do the uh, the road we... Um, Oh, what do you call that? Um, oh, I forget. There, there is a pledge that we make. I forget what we call it. Um, pledge that we make at the beginning of every meeting. I do that basically and, and, and everybody takes off. So we, we pretty much kept our meetings going right um, after April. So we kept uh, everything going. Change of the Guard happens in July. Of course, people are very scared. We have a lot of people who travel in our club. Um, and so a lot of them had to be on quarantine after they get back and things like that. So we could not really do face-to-face -face meetings. Um, so uh, I started, you know, when things were, when, when the uh, Supreme Court knocked down the governor's uh, um, law that we, sh you know, that, that it was not considered anymore that we should isolate like that, I started asking people if they felt comfortable actually like meeting. And what I did, I created a survey. 
and mm -hmm. I would survey people and ask them, you know, if you feel comfortable, let me know. And then I got a feeling. And then people who are comfortable to come and meet in person, uh, we chose to meet in places that were already uh, considered safe, like the beer gardens. So actually, can I share some pictures that, that we took? Okay. So, um, so you met outdoors? Yeah, so we met Which outdoors. Is wonderful. Right. Yeah. We don't have we don't have too much more outdoor okay. time here in Wisconsin. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Um, year, that's, okay. that's okay. Um, I think I think one of the most important things uh, for me as president was to make sure that uh, I became very unconventional in my way of engaging people. Um, so I would definitely after a long work day, I would just pick up the phone and just call my members in person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would check up on them. Most of them are teachers. Uh, so I would, you know, ask them how their day was. Most of them were on summer break. Uh, just that personal touch, I think, kind of also helped them know that even if we are not meeting in person, that the club really cared about them. I think that that was very, very important. And a lot of them expressed the fact that uh, that was important. We had a lot of people that, uh, that uh, had older folks and they were very concerned about their health. And, uh, you know, I made sure that I reached out to them. Some of them were in facilities that were, you know, involved in a lot of the stuff that was going on around the state. So that personal touch also kept my members engaged. Um, and we actually even had two or three members actually join our club during the pandemic. Uh, and they were very young, and they were very young people and uh, so they ch and I'm going to finish with this. So I had a challenge because I was very busy and we couldn't meet in person and you got to do the change of the guard. So I actually m did a, a, a virtual change of the guard with my club. Um, it was hybrid because some people came to the beer garden and we were able to actually do the meeting from there. And then the people who couldn't come because of health concerns or anything, we had a setup where we could take the, the thing around uh, so they could see every member and they could be able to see who was there and we, we were able to interact through the Zoom meeting. Um, yeah, so that friendship and fellowship, right? So create those opportunities where we can connect. Right, so I think the most important thing for me that I can give the clubs is uh, we are in very unconventional times. So like the lady said earlier, we have to throw out some of the conventional, traditional ways of engaging membership. And I think uh, we are at a time when members really need empathy. And I think as a leader, and, uh, and we are dealing with a lot of things that, that is involving you know, racism and all of that. And our club is very diverse. We have about nine different flags in our club. So you can imagine the diversity of thought, the way that they're dealing with this is very different coming from different countries. So we have to be very sensitive to how they are dealing with this. Some, we had a guy from our club who was from Italy. And my God, Italy was decimated by the, right. by the thing. Right. So we, we took a lot of time to, he actually is the one that got our club to understand how bad the pandemic was even before it hit the US. So mm. that's the other thing I can say. Uh, know your members and mm -hmm. know what value they can bring, but it's definitely doable uh, to have a hybrid meeting. Great. Thank you very much, Edwin. We'll go to our last panelist, Bob in Fond du Lac. Could you tell us um, how long have you been a hybrid and what is your personal role? Yeah, so I was president um, back in March when everything got shut down. Um, we quickly moved to Zoom. I think we took one meeting off and uh, then we moved to Zoom. And I think um, we stayed with Zoom uh, until the, I guess, virtual changing of the guard. Um, and that, um, that first hybrid meeting took place uh, July 9th uh, with our new club president. And um, so we've been working on hybrid ever since. And, um, you know, we started out with uh, a camera that has uh, artificial intelligence in it. Uh, but due to the size of the room, I think uh, the biggest complaint that we heard was that there was not uh, great sound for the members um, mm -hmm. that were joining us via Zoom. And I, I think that's probably a theme throughout. And so um, our, um, our club meets at a country club 
And at first I had approached them about what it would take to integrate with the PA system that they had built into the room. And um, they had me talk to their sound engineering company and um, no real good solutions from them. And so what we ended up doing uh, pretty recently, actually the last couple of weeks is um, we acquired some additional equipment, um, a very small sound mixer, and also our own uh, portable uh, public address system. So it's a, just a little PA system. Um, and so we have that on a stand. Uh, we've basically stopped using our venues um, sound system altogether. So we use um, our PA system and then we also um, are now able to get that so that uh, members on Zoom can hear very well. We have wireless mics and um, we have one set up for our speaker or the person presiding. And then we also have one on a stand in the middle of the room. And because they're wireless um, and that's piped into our sound mixer, which is then into the um, computer for the people on yep. Zoom and the people um, in the room, uh, it works out pretty well. This week, we're actually going to um, integrate a video mixer. So we'll be able to uh, have multiple different cameras. Um, sure. And so, so yeah. For everyone on the call, Bob, um, how many members do you usually have in the room? Um, lately now with the hybrid, we're somewhere in the 20. So 20 to 27, I think was our high. Okay. Um, and, and then, then on we Zoom? have, yeah, usually 30 to 45 on Zoom. Okay. So certainly one of the larger clubs on the call tonight in terms of what yep. you're designing your technology for. So good. Exactly. Um, well, thank you for each of you for giving us a little bit of the background. I'm taking a look at the clock and realizing I think it's important that the participants get to ask questions of our panelists. So if you would like to ask a question, please raise your hand or enter the chat and Don um, will, will moderate there. You know, if you want to ask about lessons learned or, or successes. Um, one of the things still on my mind actually is, is are you doing speakers in person or online or both? So if that can come through this, that would be great. But do we have questions already done? Yes, we do. Our first question is from Tom. Can you go for it, Tom? Hey, yeah, Tom Hockley, uh, Elmbrook Rotary Club. Uh, I, mean, I am a little curious. We're actually um, starting on our second Zoom meeting this Friday. And we get about 60 people coming to a club, and we get uh, we had 14 last Friday. I now have eight coming this Friday. Now it might add up to a little more. So what I'm seeing is low in person at the moment. Uh, one of my questions that I really wanted to ask was, um, we've been having our speaker at this point in these first two meetings, and we're continuing. We're thinking of this continuing. We're having the speakers come in via Zoom. We're thinking from a technology standpoint, we're better to have that happen. Uh, we think we have the technology figured out. We're tweaking it a little bit. We have a camera and so forth, and we're and some external speakers. So for the panelists, um, just wanted to have, you know, what, it, what are your best practices as far as uh, what you're experiencing with having your speakers uh, be in person versus Zoom or anything else? Uh, so for Milwaukee Rotary, we um, have done both kind of virtual speakers and um, in-person speakers so far. And uh, we actually next week are going to have a speaker come in from Boston. Uh, I will say, I didn't mention it earlier, um, for our fully virtual meetings, we've had generally around 100 uh, people tune in and then watch it. Um, we put all of our virtual programming on our YouTube channel and people, those usually get around 100, 100 or so views after the fact as well. Uh, in terms of our, in our hybrid meetings, we have uh, around 30 right now in person in Memorial Hall with around 75 joining us virtually. Um, but back to your question in terms of virtual versus in-person speakers. Um, we have found it's a little easier to do in-person speakers just with our personal setup, which um, I think is pretty different from what everybody else is using here. 
Um, but uh, we are looking forward to having our first virtual speaker next week for our hybrid program. Um, so yeah. Hi, this is Heidi and Alcorn. So we have done both. We have had people be speakers in person and we have um, had people come in via Zoom. For example, our, a foreign exchange student uh, from Spain was here to, at Alcorn High School and we were able to catch up with her back in Spain and her family and see how she was doing. Um, the benefit of having someone in the room is that I think there are probably more questions, um, but at this point, I think our membership is getting used to the idea of Zoom meetings and, and feeling free to ask questions. So I don't think there's a, it, the scale isn't tipped one way or the other. And there was one other quick thing I wanted to mention. Uh, besides our regular meetings, we have had social meetings. I think we've had four of them. So like we've gone to um, a drive-in burger joint. We went to a pizza place that had music. We went to a, a microbrewery. And so... That was an opportunity for anyone who felt comfortable to go to an event that was outdoors and was really more social. And so there are a couple of times where we have not had a business Zoom meeting at noon on that week because we were doing either a Monday or Wednesday night um, social meeting. And those have been pretty well attended and people have uh, appreciated the opportunity to get together, talk and you know, drink a beer. <laughs> so there you go. And for those, um, is there any any hy hybrid component or is that a strictly in-person event? No, that's strictly in person and people are being very respectful in terms of masks and sitting six feet apart and all of uh, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, Absolutely. it's for the people who really like in-person rotary, which there are a lot of us that do and that makes sense. Absolutely. Well, we need to do things for everyone, right? Get everyone to feel comfortable. Wonderful. Do we have another question? I, I, I can uh, comment from uh, Mantwalk Sunrise. We started out uh, having our speakers in on Zoom. And when we went to the face-to-face uh, -face and hybrid, right away our first face-to-face -face had, uh, had Zoom option. Uh, mm -hmm. We haven't had a, a, a Zoom speaker. Uh, they've all been face-to-face -face with us. Oh, and, okay. and, and I'm trying to think that if we did have a, uh, a Zoom speaker come in, uh, we only have just the one little laptop and I, I don't know, you know how we could, we could probably, where we're at right now, we really don't have the facility to be able to tie into a large screen where the people that were face-to-face, -face, they'd be at sure. a disadvantage. Uh, that and, makes sense. But, but I do think the advantage of Zoom is you can go across the world and bring somebody in and have, yeah. have great speakers. But yeah. fortunately, we've had you know very good uh, speakers. And in fact, we've had sometimes competition and not enough time uh, mm -hmm. for our speakers. We've had our, our, our mayor, our police chief, uh, you know, different representatives from within the community. Uh, sure. Today, it was the director of our local Humane Society. And so we're all, the, the, those, the, the one thing that we have had a challenge is uh, with an early bird uh, breakfast, trying to get in, get our orders, get the, the, the food delivered. How do you break to have a, a meal and then have your speaker? And uh, there just seems to be a whole lot more to be uh, trying to sort out. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot more work, right? It, 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 actually, I'm finding myself, I'm, I'm taking my breakfast home. <laughs> yeah. so I don't get a you know, to... you know, one thing I would suggest though, I mean, that's one of the ways that you might in collaboration with your members, you know, have a conversation with members, but maybe talk about does the time need to change? You know, the, because we're operating in a different environment is, you know, does it have to be stuck to the same time it always was? And because yeah. you have this, uh, you know, hurdle to, to overcome, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you change it, it's a half hour later. And you might find, because people are working from home, uh, and don't have to get up and get dressed and get to work, they might be more keen on a little later start. You know, I, I mean, those are the kinds of things that we really do want to think, yeah. you know, just throw it all up in the air and see if maybe it should change. It doesn't have to be the same it's always been. That, that's Absolutely. a good point. Yeah. I'd like to Absolutely. jump in and thank everybody, if, if I may. We've been meeting outdoors at a park 
seven o'clock in the morning, but now that it's getting colder, we're starting to look for options. So thank you for your suggestions. I did throw a note in the chat room and I'm gonna throw, and one or two people have answered already, but I just wanna throw it out there as well. When you have hybrid meetings, you know, we normally include meals in our dues quarterly. So if we'd go to a hybrid meeting, how would you adjust that for dues for people who are at home, versus dues for people who are at a location eating a breakfast or a lunch. So I can tell you what we've done. Uh, basically, we decided that, um, you know, we have such a large club that we didn't want to make it too difficult on our treasurer for billing uh, different sets of different people. So we just basically took our, our dues or our meal charge uh, from 12 down to five and that's basically no matter whether you're in person or on Zoom, and that covers you know some of our technology costs and then also our meals costs. And so I think, um, well, we've been uh, last week we sent out our dues billing, so we'll see how the uh, the reaction <laughs> is. But we we haven't heard too much too many complaints. So okay, and what I what I, what I want to say uh oshkosh what we've what, as soon as we went to online we halved essentially the meals portion portion of the dues and that's kind of the pattern going forward when we started doing hybrid there's a meal charge if you attend um the in-person format and the treasurer bills that uh afterwards if any other club is doing anything different than that, can you raise your hand real quick and so I can uh, quickly call on you? Uh, I can say from Milwaukee Rotary, we've done something different. Um, so when we started meeting in, um, we went fully virtual in March, um, we took the costs. So we pre-bill for in six month periods. So we had sent out um, due statements for January to June in December. And so we had already kind of collected money for that time for all of our budget. And so we took the money that we were saving um, from paying our caterer and renting our hall and all of that stuff. Um, we, we obviously issued refunds to those who wanted them, but we took the money we were saving and we made donations to local community organizations um, focused on, uh, you know, uh, food um, insecurity. So we made a donation to Feeding America and a couple other local Milwaukee organizations. When we sent out our um, dues payments for the next six months, so July t to this December, we offered a um, what we called COVID-19 relief, um, which was a discount. Um, a subtraction of a portion of the dues, which um, in theory would have gone to uh, lunches, um, room reservations, parking, et cetera, um, for that. And it was optional. So uh, if people wished to continue to pay the full dues, um, they could certainly do so. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. Hi, this is Edwin. I'll just chime in very quickly. Um, for our club, we are not, we are neither a lunch or a breakfast club. We meet after hours and there's really no meal component to it, but I had to be creative with the change of the guard. So the dues that we charge actually does include an amount of money that, that goes towards the change of the guard. And being that, you know, it was virtual and, uh, you know, we really didn't have the whole program and things like that. Um, I just had the club, you know, cover for the meals for the people who attended in person. Uh, the people who didn't attend in person, um, we just decided that we would give them a relief on that particular amount uh, in their dues for the next year. So um, we're a little bit creative. I mean, we don't have the meals, so I, I think it kind of makes it a little bit easier. And sure. one thing too that I'll share with the clubs, because when I was looking at the presentation from the survey, it looks like cost was a big thing. One thing that I encourage as president in my club, because we are a family, uh, if somebody is not able to pay their dues and we are going through very difficult times of COVID-19, 
Uh, if somebody is willing to pay dues for a member or some club members want to come together and pay dues for that particular member so that we don't lose them, we did that to retain our membership. So just want to put that out there as, the best, as one of the few things that we did. And we were able to retain about two members doing that. So Thank you, Edwin. A generous, a generous gesture by some of your club members. Thank you for that. Um, gosh, guys, the good conversation. We're already up against our deadline here. So in order to continue the conversation, we have created a Facebook group. Um, we'd love to have you join. So Don, can we pop that up for everyone? There it is. Uh, it is a Keeping Rotarians Connected. It's a private group on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook by searching 6270, or you can do a quick scan of this code. We encourage you to join. Don, Kathy, and I are moderators on the Facebook page. It's private. Let's post and share. Ask questions of one another. Please use that as a resource to keep the conversation going. We also want to... Go ahead, Kathy. I just want to add, you know, we just created it. So we're we are building resources and other things in there. So, uh, you know, please join, please come back, please share what's going well for you, as well as post things that, you know, you have questions about it. That's the intent here, but it's going to evolve over time. It isn't fully, uh, fully evolved yet. So you are the first ones we're sharing it with and yes. inviting to the group. That's so, exactly. so please jump on board. We would love to have you. And it looks like Edwin has some things he might be posting on that page, I hope. He's sharing some things in chat. So very, very cool. Um, the next thing is to let you know, our next session is next month, October 15th, a Tuesday. So watch your inbox for an invitation to that and save the date. We'll shift to that burning question. I mean, Kathy set us up so well tonight talking about um, what we need to do to retain members. So Kathy, I don't know if you wanna add anything there. Yes, I, I mean, we do want to start to move from, uh, and, and I guess I wanna take one step back and say, you guys have done fabulous. I mean, I, you, I can't tell you how much we appreciate what you've done to get your clubs and keep your clubs meeting and moving forward. And so I, I absolutely want to celebrate that. Um, we want to, though, keep pushing you and making you move forward to, uh, you know, kind of to evolve, to get to a next level and uh, use that technology uh, to make those meetings just as effective as is possible and to keep your members engaged with you in this new world that we are all kind of uh, operating in. So that's, that's all I want to say. Good Thank question. you, Kathy. Quick question, was the first one recorded also and where can we find that? Is it on the district YouTube channel or where would we find the first session? Well, it should be, we're gonna post it in the Facebook group, but okay. Don's yeah. the- Yeah, we, it, right now it is, on the, uh, it is on the Zoom cloud. If you have a copy of the, the most recent membership newsletter, yes. it's listed, it's listed in there uh, and we are going to be moving all of these to the district Facebook or uh, to the district YouTube channel at some point. It's just, we've got a lot of parts moving and just trying to keep everything moving forward and, and not get too far behind. Thank you. Thank yep. you for the question, Mary. Awesome. I think we're going to try a polling technique. Aren't we done? Yes. I'm excited uh, about this. So the, there, there's lots of different ways that we can uh, interact with each other. And um, so we're going to go, you, you can either use your computer, uh, open up another tab, or uh, use your phone. And let me get this started and share. That was the one problem of, try, uh, of me running the slides. <laughs> Yep. So, so the web the website. Oh, there you go. You got so, it. So the website You're, is menti.com. And when you go there, you just enter in that seven digit code. And once I know that somebody's there, we're gonna have about 60 seconds for you to just go in and type in what was your biggest takeaway or actionable item. 
from tonight's session. And that's menti.com. And can you read the number? Because it's hidden underneath it is. my Zoom. Eight, eight five two nine one zero nine. 8529109. So you go to menti.com. It says the question is not open. Okay, there yeah. you go. No, it's open. Yep. Operator error. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was the only operator error I had tonight. <laughs> So one of the reasons why we wanted to do this is this is just another way that you can engage with your uh, members either in a, in a meeting or in a business meeting. Um, so um, some good comments here. We need to contact members personally that are not attending and make sure that we care about them. Social meeting only. Continue continue to engage members in person and virtually use YouTube. Rethink the flow of meetings. Right, think about what you want on camera and what order you need. Um, while the comments are coming in, I can share something that the Oshkosh Club does quite well. When you have a speaker and you know they're going to be popular and they need extra time, adjust the timeline of things. Right? We're going to ring the bell 10 minutes earlier than usual. Think about that experience for both in the room and online. Thank yeah. you, Ada. She likes Edwin's personal contact with members. She added yeah. that in the chat for us. Yes, okay. new ideas. Great. So the next question is, and I'm going to open up the, the voting is open going to open up the voting again. What is your pain point or obstacle to retaining and growing club membership? And this is one that we, we definitely want your input for how we structure our next session. Thank you for the link to your YouTube channel, Michelle. This is a little bit tougher question, right? Kind of reflecting on what's getting in your way. And maybe there's some uh, reflection from what the members are looking for. What can we do? This is a difficult time for people to commit. Um, time of day of the meeting. Mm -hmm. Getting new and old members engaged on a planned basis. At present, we do not have anything that is used in a regular way. Harder to meet people. Cost of virtual format and not being comfortable uh, coming in person. Mm -hmm. And Ada offers activities to engage in. Yes. Ada offers, um, it seems to be a constant challenge how to keep members engaged and passionate about Rotary. Mm -hmm. I love that word, right? It's mm -hmm. tough, it's draining. We're online, Zoom fatigue and, and stress gets in the way. This should be the, the fun, this should be the energy. Right. And I think you made this point, Lisa, but part of what we want to do is take this and, and use it to build out the next session to help, uh, to help you. But, um, you know, the engaging on Facebook group, um, you know, talking to each other, I mean, all of those things, because this is a, a learning process. I, I wouldn't beat yourselves up too much. We're all kind of in this, we're in this together. We absolutely are. So. And we hate to use that term new normal, but yeah. this is, this is going to be here for a while and the world is going to look different when we come out the other side than it did before it began. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So Don, I think there's some resources here again at the end of the slides. We have yeah. some additional going hybrid resources here, actually from District 5950. I know some of the tech questions popped up again today. So this is a presentation that their district did as well as some very specific tech meeting setups based on the size of your meeting, um, which you might find useful. And then the, the link to the slides we use this evening. And then the last slide in the presentation are just some more support resources for you to talk about you know, engaging in fun and some productivity. So just some ideas there for you as um, a resource as you think about how to best move your own club forward. So are we going to send this presentation to everyone who attended this evening? Yes, we are. Okay. Along with a survey, because we always want to know how useful it is and what can we do differently to help you, uh, how we can improve going forward and to help you do the good rotary that you do every day. But I do want to circle back and say a big thank you to the five panelists who joined us today. We greatly appreciate your time and sharing. So to all five of you, um, I do want to say a heartfelt thank you from Kathy and Don and I to Michelle, Dennis, Heidi, Edwin, and Bob for sharing. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. So thank you all. We hope we You're see you on the 13th. Welcome. And watch your mailbox for the presentation and the feedback survey. Thank you all. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Have a good week. Thank you very much.